In the aftermath of crocodile hunter Steve Irwin's tragic death last week, the people of Australia have led an open revolt against the beasts responsible. Though the war on stingrays has not been officially declared by Australian officials, a recent report from the Associated Press reveals that the bodies of 10 mutilated stingrays were found on the beaches of Queensland in the past few days. Though representatives for Irwin have condemned these acts, the Australian youth has mobilized, calling for further violence. So why would anyone go this far simply to exact revenge? What constitutes a victory in the war on stingrays? Since stingrays do not have a written language, could a peace treaty ever come about? Earlier today, I spoke with the Australian militia's de facto leader, Brisby McAngusvain, about his thoughts and goals on the upcoming military campaign. Mr. McAngusvain, thank you for speaking with us today. Well, sorry, it ain't a problem with talking to a few folks about this, and when it relates to it, such as stingrays and filming the beast is the same. That's great. Uh, if I could just go and uh, get a translator, I'll be right back. Guys! Do any of you speak Australian? Yes, calm down. Zach! Come on, all right? You Zach. will breathe! Australians speak, uh, speak English. Yeah, I thought so too. So tell me, Brisby, first of all, can I call you Brisby? No! Alright, uh, perhaps you could tell me why you murdered these poor creatures for a crime that they themselves did not commit. Well, it's all rage a man. What did go with? It's supposed to finger out old tea leaves, the wang tass, all the pulley, you know what I mean, mate? Okay, well, what exactly is the victory in the war on stingrays? We ain't killing the strings, they're still on the string rays on the beach! Oh, oh of course. Uh, thank you for your time. Boston. Though we encountered some roadblocks during our conversation with Brisby, I think I got the gist of his argument. You see, he, and by extension the Australian militia, believes that stingrays are bloodthirsty creatures sent to Earth by aliens with the intention of murdering national icons from members of the United Nations. With that in mind, I went to the foremost opponent on the war on stingrays, Dr. Edward Albee. Stingrays are bloodthirsty creatures sent to Earth by aliens with the intention of murdering national icons from members of the United Nations. So, why shouldn't I mutilate them? Well, um, that's a complicated question. But uh, first of all, I'd, I'd just like to say that, that everything you, you just said about stingrays, that, that's not true. It's not? No. Actually, uh, stingrays are a peaceful creature. Let me draw you a diagram. Killer stingray is to stingray as blank is to Christianity. The AFL-CIO? No. You see, these violent acts are not characteristics of normal stingray. What the stingray did was abnormal and evil, and the extreme end of stingray culture. So you're saying the murder of Steve Irwin was racially motivated? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just... I didn't need to hear any more after that. America, we need to wipe these bloodthirsty, racist creatures off the face of the earth. In the coming weeks, it might seem like the war on stingrays has no foreseeable conclusion, or that the war was started on false pretenses, or that stingrays have no connection to Osama bin Laden. But we've got to stay strong. Sometimes these things take little leaps of faith. And mutilation. Sometimes they take mutilation. And this is one of those times. For Lampoonery News, I'm Zachary Little.